Welcome back for to uh, to round three of this uh, Ether Revolt draft. Round two went pretty quickly in the end. The opponent didn't seem to have much stomach for the fight there, so uh, fingers crossed we have a similar outcome here in this round. We won the die roll, so that's happy news. So let's see what kind of draw we get. And this is fine. I'm absolutely happy with this draw, so we will keep this for sure. Opponent's mulligan to five. Oh, sorry, it's mulligan to six and deciding whether it's mulligan to five. Oh wow, okay, he's mulligan to four, he keeps, oh wow. Okay, well, let's see what our opponent does. We will play our Aether Poisoner. I think we'll play, depending on what our opponent does, we'll probably play Narnum Cobra next turn. Oh, okay, we hit. I don't think that actually changes anything. Obviously, we don't want to play out Vengeful Rebel. We want to keep it for a potential threat that our opponent might have. So I think we'll just play out Narnum Cobra. Represent as much damage as possible. Oh, man. Our opponent's... Let's see what our opponent does here. When it does nothing. Okay, well. It might be worth actually putting the counter on the servo here. We might want the Narnum Cobra for defensive purposes, so I think putting the counter on the servo isn't worth call here. I guess it's through the same amount of damage in the end. Um, but if we need the Narnum Cobra on defensive duties later on in this game, then uh, that's probably just a better play. Our opponent's going to disallow his Seed Sculptor. Okay. We will do our four damage and carry on. We could, I mean, there's an argument we could resourceful. Okay, opponent plays workshop assistant. Druid of the Cowl. I think I'm okay here with, I think I'm okay with swinging with everything, knowing that we can play Vengeful Rebel. I mean, everything kills the Workshop Assistant. If our opponent blocks the Servo, then, uh, yeah, he blocks the Narnum Cobra. I think in that case, I'm more inclined to play the Druid Kill. Knowing that we could potentially kill a an X3 creature next turn anyway. Or actually an X4 creature, because it's improvised. So yeah, I think this is the stronger line. See what our opponent does. Implement of examination is not going to do much for you here, sir. I think we will resourceful return next turn. I feel even more comfortable doing that knowing that we, we will have a play no matter what. Of course we could have kept the Drew of the Kill back and then, you know, replayed the, 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 whichever we, whatever we resourcefully returned, but I think I'm okay with just getting the damage in just now. We will take back Seed Sculptor. And we drew into a forest, okay. So we can play our land and play out the Seed Sculptor. And I think we will put it on, hmm. We'll put it on the Seed Sculptor itself, I think. I feel like we're in pretty good shape here, but we shall see. Yeah, we're absolutely happy with that. We'll just, uh, Battle that at the bridge and swing. Um, so what we can do here is we can play Aging Automaton. 
in play battle at the bridge. Yeah. And then swing. I think our opponent's going to have to work very hard to come back from this board state. Given that we can prey upon and bench will rebel his next play. Opponent's going to draw and dig, which we're not too worried about. Okay. I think our opponent's still dead. Uh, no, perhaps not. Yeah, we can obviously prey upon with the poisoner, which is what we will do. This should be lethal. Well, that was quick. Uh, we will do the same as we did last time, adding a forest. I'm pretty sure adding the forest is right here, although it's close. I think we'll go like that. The opponent was struggling there, was always going to be struggling with a, a mull down to five. Such is life. This hand is effy. We can't really play anything in it. We, you know, obviously, if we see uh, an artifact or some description, okay, our opponent's mulliganing again. And he's deciding whether he's mulling to five keeps. Okay, that, that makes me feel much better. We could at least potentially. Well, if we draw a swamp, we can play Gifted Ethelbert in turn two. Vengeful Rebel. <laughs> it's normally a card I'd want to keep a hold of, but I don't think we can afford to do it here, unfortunately. It's slightly annoying, but we need to see an artifact or a land. Okay, well we've seen a land but the wrong colour. We're not going to be playing anything this turn unfortunately. Next turn we can play Defiant Salvager out. Another Eager Construct. Now the good thing about these Eager Constructs is that Gifted Etherboard shuts them right down. I would very much like to see a, a swamp somewhere here. Yes, we would like to use. Okay, I'm going to put that to the bottom. We do not do not need forests. Opponent doesn't swing. I wonder if that was a misclick. Okay, so we see our swamp that we were hoping for. Um. So I think we will play out gifted etherborn, and we could. We I mean we could do something like prey upon here. Um. Okay, so our opponent's gonna. Opponent's got metallic rebuke in hand. That is interesting. Okay. That's why he kept eager constructs up. He wanted the counter spell up. I think I'm. I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with that, I think. Only has two cars in hand, and we have a lot of gas. Shipping Mori is very, very good, however. Um, and I would have liked a death touch creature to do something about that. Okay. So. We can play this out. And the automaton. And then 
sacrifice the automaton. I think I'm okay with drawing a card here as well. So next turn we will be able to play um, Riparian Tiger. We would have been able to do it anyway, of course, with the Spire of Industry, but see what our opponent does here. Winking readers, sure. Let's see if our opponent wants to swing here. It does not. Okay, I think I'm just going to play out the Riparian Tiger here and pass. Flyers were always going to be our, our concern. Um, obviously, we can deal with the Winkin Raiders, but it will be at the expense of a Defiant Salvager. So it's effectively a three for one when we consider Agent Automaton, the Defiant Salvager, and the Preopon. So it's not great from our perspective. But we might have, we might be out of options. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm forced into a position where I'm going to keep on playing like lands because I know we have the Fen Holler, but I really don't like this play, unfortunately, but I think we have to do it. Kind of look after our life tool. We cannot afford to swing here because we need to protect our life tool somewhat. Opponent only has two cards in hand, which works in our favour, but as has been in other games, the issue the issue this game has been our mana base. And we have flooded a little bit, unfortunately. We've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight land and seven spells is a little bit on the unfortunate side. Oh, eight land and six spells. Wow, yeah, not good. Then metallic, well, our opponent's disconnected. Oh, well, see if he comes back. I hope he doesn't. It would suit me down to the ground. Bank my two boosters. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that between Spire of Industry and the Sky Ship, Sky Sovereign, sorry, and uh, two potential boosters we would end up breaking even for this draft, which is where you want to be. Certainly not going infinite or anything exciting like that, but it would at least mean we've drafted for free this time, which is always a bit of a brucey bonus. We are fairly far behind this game, but we haven't drawn the best. It's difficult to complain. Okay, our opponent is back. Uh, we will not attack. He wasn't disconnected too long. See what he does. See what he attacks with. Okay, he's going to attack with everything. Um, if we block the shipwreck, Mori, then obviously he's going to double pump it and kill the tiger. I think I'm going to just take out uh, Eager Construct. I mean, if he has a pump spell, it doesn't make any difference either way because he just uses the pump spell on the Mori and we're, we lose the fight no matter what. I think it's, uh, yeah, our opponent's going to hit us for six damage. Any sort of creature here would be good. If our opponent plays a creature, we are in bad shape. And that's a very good creature. That's about as good as it gets in this situation. Well, in saying that, in saying that, That's not bad either. So let's play him out, killing the eager construct. Oh, 
I mean, our opponent still still goes with both here, potentially. Um, and we're still not in great shape. I mean, the good thing is he can only make the shipwreck more a 4-1, so he cannot kill this guy ship called Sovereign Monstrous Onslaught. Okay, so in response, we have to crew here. Okay, so we really need a three power creature next turn, or, or we're in bad shape. Let's see what our opponent does here. Our opponent chooses not to attack. Either poison or not. Uh, are we just dead because of trample? I think we are. I think we're just dead because of the trample from the, the Lifecraft Cavalry, unfortunately. We flooded a little bit this game, which makes me wonder if taking that land out was the correct call. Maybe 16 is enough with the curve we have and the unbridled growth. And I may go back, see what our opponent does here. Does he realise that Lifecraft Cavalry has trample? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On to game three. I don't think that game was particularly close, to be honest. Um, I think we can... What are we going to do here? Do you know what? I think we'll stick with the land. We've mulliganed too often. I think I'm going to stick with the land option. It's the safest bet. We will play first. And we have a good hand here. I'm very happy with this hand. We can bring him back, Ven the, the likes of uh, Vengeful Rebel with Resourceful Return is, is going to be gas, as the kids say. Defiant Salvager killing Narnum Cobra for Vengeful Rebel is also not the worst play in the world. Gear Construct, sure. want the swamp. I think we probably do actually. I think I'd rather keep it there. We can do some pretty sick things next turn potentially. Of course, sacking the Narnum Cobra to the Defiant um, Salvager does make uh, does make our resourceful return considerably worse. Uh, I'm happy enough to take that. I think. Let's see what our opponent does here. Nothing. Okay. I mean, obviously we are winning this damage race, so if he just wants to keep on racing, I am fairly cool with that, I think. Is the report stuck on three land? No. Okay. I don't really understand why our opponent's willing to trade two for four every turn, but maybe there's something I'm not taking into account. I'll keep on playing out land and keep on swinging. He must be setting out a disallow. I can only presume that our opponent's sat on counter magic, and that's why he's so keen not to lose his eager construct. That is just flooding outrageously. But you can't keep on swinging two for four for the rest of the game. We are flooding a bit though, just slightly worrying.
shielded ether thief, huh? Blocking the defiant salvador, one would presume. I think we'll just prey upon and, and kill it. Consider disallow there. I'm pretty confident our opponent has disallow in hand now because he did very seriously consider that there. So he was thinking about using it. So that is worth bearing in mind. If your opponent plays something like Winkin Raiders, uh, which I'm hoping is what he plays. Okay, so I'm. I think I'm okay going firing off the Vengeful Rebel here, safe in the knowledge that we can reverse the resourceful return to bring it back. We have seven mana, so we could do it twice. Um, yeah, I think I'm okay with doing that. Yeah, we were we were we were expecting that, so that's okay. But we can pay the three, so let's just do that. mistake with our mana there, but that's okay. If our opponent, we can trade here, I think that I'm quite happy to do that in the end, I think. Actually, no, I think, no. If our opponent wants to block, I think I'd rather do the damage. I'm going to choose to make his a creature of 1 4. He also plays Janty Sentry. Midnight Entourage makes pumps both our guys. I think that seems pretty good here. It's pretty much the best card we could have expected, I think, actually, to be honest. It's pretty huge. That's that's pretty huge for us. And if our opponent wants to double block, we can bring it back. You know, if our opponent wants to double block the, the Vengeful Rebel, then we're just going to bring him back. Our opponent's in really bad shape there. He only has one card in hand also. He has to block here as well. Yeah, that's fine. We get to draw a card. We can cast that. We can then resource for return to get back the rebel. Sacrifice the unbraid of growth, draw a card and pass. And we're so far ahead here, it's not even true.
put that swamp to the bottom. Your portrait is not a card I hate, but it's not a card, you know, you, you need to be struggling for two drops to play it. There's an opponent looking for revolt here, is that what he's thinking? I'm not going to block, obviously. I mean, if our opponent, our opponent can't double block here, he has to block both creatures, so... Um, let's go into combat and see what happens. blocks. Okay, our opponent doesn't have a trick, so that's fine. And I think we... I don't... Th hmm. I think we'll just... For opponent, if we play it this, our opponent can up with that. He's going to tap that down. Still gives us two lethal threats. I think, actually, we're in a position where we can just play out the Vengeful Rebel. As bad as that would normally be, I think we can just do it here and play out the Seed Sculptor, putting the counter on itself and just go wide. I think that's probably the correct play. Just give ourselves the, the greatest possibility of, of lethal. Normally I wouldn't advocate playing, playing it like that, but we've had such value at the Vengeful Rebel already that I'm not too disappointed in, in doing it like that. Okay, so our opponent cannot block the Seed Sculptor, it has to get through, and he'll go to one. Um, so yeah, we will just attack with everything. All of our opponent's creatures will die. Or he'll tap one of them down, which I'm, I'm absolutely fine with. Sure thing. have to block these two, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any difference which way you block, sir, really. We will play out an eager construct. Put the forest to the bottom. The opponent will use the same ability. We'll then play Fane Holder. And let's see what you've got, sir. It's going to have to be good, I think. Okay, he's going to draw his card. We still have three lethal threats on the board, so eh, four lethal threats, sorry, so it would have to be some sort of fabricate creature, I guess. Yeah, okay, so we got there. Um first draft in a while where we've actually done something. I feel that deck was pretty good. Um we've had other drafts that haven't went as well. The last draft didn't go very well. And that draft I think went pretty well, and I would have been very disappointed had it been uh, a one in two effort. Um, we got there at the end, we went to a mom, picked up a couple of boosters and between the Sky Sovereign and the uh, Spire of Industry we're, we're in pretty good shape, I think we'll, we will end up um, almost breaking even on the draft which isn't too shabby, so uh, hopefully you'll join me next time for another draft, until then, bye bye.